Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me. Well, good morning and welcome to our service on Sunday, the 14th of June, 2020. We are still in lockdown, and so here I am on my own in the church at St. Mary's in Hale. But even though there's distance between us, we're still joined by the One Spirit. Our sermon today will be given to us by uh, Chris Holleran. Chris is the local missional leader at St. Mary's Church in West Bank. Our prayers will be led by the Boys Brigade or members of the Boys Brigade and leaders of the Girls Guide also down in West Bank. And our hymns will be uh, played for us today by David and Alwyn and also I'll be playing a piece myself. So let's have our opening prayer. We come before you, gracious God, just as we are. We come with our weaknesses and our vulnerabilities. We come with our fears and apprehensions. We come with faith and doubt. We come to offer and to receive. We come to you, the King of love, in the name of your Son and in the power of your Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing our first uh, well, worship song. I think it's me next. Um, I'm not sure. Just have to wait and see who comes up. But let's sing together. Time of confession. It is always right that as we come to worship, 
We also come to the Lord with the things that we need to be sorry for, things that we have done or said or thought that we know have been wrong and have hurt others, and to ask for God's forgiveness. Let's just spend a moment maybe to gather our thoughts about the things that we need to bring to our Lord at this time. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sins and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And let me say this prayer. Loving God, we have sinned against you. We have done what is wrong in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to have our readings and Chris will then uh, bring God's word to us. Good morning. So today's reading is taken from Romans 5 beginning at verse 1. Now that we've been put right with God through faith, we have a peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He has brought us by faith into his experience of God's grace in which we now live. And so we boast of the hope that we have in sharing in God's glory. But we also boast of our troubles because we know that trouble produces endurance. Endurance brings God's approval and his approval creates hope. This hope doesn't disappoint us for God has poured his love into our hearts by means of the Holy Spirit, who is God's gift to us. For when we are still helpless, Christ died for the wicked at the time that God chose. It is a difficult thing for someone to die for a righteous person. It may even be that somebody might dare to die for a good person. But God has shown us how much he loves us. It is while we were all still sinners that Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. It is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 9. Jesus has pity for the people. Jesus went around visiting all the towns and villages. He taught in the synagogues preach the good news about the kingdom and heal people with every kind of disease and sickness. As he saw the crowds, his heart was filled with pity for them because they were worried and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. So he said to his disciples, the harvest is large, but there are few workers to gather it in. Pray to the owner of the harvest that he will send out workers to gather in his harvest. Jesus called his twelve disciples together and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. James and his brother John, the sons of Zebedee, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the, te- the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Patriot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. These twelve men were sent out by Jesus with the following instructions. Do not go to any Gentile territory or any Samaritan towns. Instead, you are to go to to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. Go and preach the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick. Bring the dead back to life. Heal those who suffer from dreaded skin diseases and drive out demons. You have received without paying, 
so give without being paid. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning everyone and welcome to St Mary's on West Bank. Just to reassure you that the church is still standing, there's no masonry fell off and the workmen have repaired the gully of the main roof. Can I ask you to get a bunch of keys? This will help in the illustration this morning and I have a bunch here to show you. Now, this bunch may be Marie, Helen, Derek, and Dave will recognize these. It's, they'll have one similar because this bunch of keys is for our center. I also have this key. I did offer our church wardens, Christine and Bill, a chain and a key each so they could hang it round the necks when they come into church. It is, however, the key to the tower and not to the main door. Jesus' central message is in him the promised kingdom has come and that God was now ruling his people in a new way. This presented a twofold challenge. It required the Jewish listeners to believe in this unlikely person that their Messiah had arrived. And it involved a politically subversive act of claiming that Jesus, not Caesar, was king. It meant turning upside down established religious and political realities. No wonder that some found it hard to take. As Paul reminds us, Jesus established his rule not by the act of political power, but by dying and making peace with God. Jesus expected a response to the message. Whether he proclaimed it in person or through the mission of the Twelve, the disciples are called to go, those who hear the message are called to believe and a response is required. Jesus' words here about those who do not receive the message may seem a bit harsh but are unavoidable. This message is so important that it demands a decision one way or the other, and the consequences of making a wrong decision are severe. But that doesn't mean everything is perfect for those who respond positively. We live in a world that doesn't love Jesus and will not love us. While we do not experience the same level of opposition that the early disciples faced, we are still called to, to a life of service and witness. We can easily opt for the easy discipleship. Acknowledge Jesus is King will affect every aspect of our lives. That's financially, politically, family, work, we can't praise Jesus as King on Sunday and fail in, in obedience on Monday. So, to the bunch of keys. I've got my own bunch of keys here now. Think of each key representing much of our lives and our circle of friends. Take, for instance, the car key. It could be for the people carrier. It indicates that we may have a family and could be used to ferry the children to school when it reopens again, or to the shops. So, yeah, that could be your close family. And again, with the house key, 
a house key. You're thinking of your family. But it could be a locker key. A locker key uh, for a place of work. A locker key for a fitness gym. So that's another bunch of people that we know and class as friends. It could be a key for church, I've already held up the tower key, or for the centre, I've already held, held those up. But all them, all the keys are given a group of people for you to think about. So whether we're young or old, no matter what our age, keys become an important part of our lives. Bike padlocks, changing room keys, door keys. But we often look at keys negatively because we are secure in our possessions against being stolen. However, keys can remind us of our daily parts of our lives where we can share with Jesus. Think of a locksmith. He carefully chooses a lock and key. When you take a key to be cut, the locksmith chooses the right type of key. There are different manufacturers. Each type of key, its own depth and shape, which is referred to by name or code. Jesus called each of his disciples. In the gospel reading we, can, we, we heard, he called his 12 disciples and sent them out. He calls them by name, knowing all about them and choosing them carefully. He knew the right person for the right job. Jesus calls us by name. Yes, he does call us, even in these strange times. He knows us intimately with our strengths and weaknesses, whatever they may be. The key the locksmith chooses is blank to start with. He then uses his tools to shape it carefully so it fits the lock perfectly. The disciples were shaped by Jesus and equipped for ministry he had planned for them. We are shaped by Jesus through our understanding of the Bible, our experiences, by the church we belong to and the people around us. Jesus shapes us carefully to fit the place where we can minister best for him and the place is in our daily lives. Look at the bunch of keys. The areas of your life represented by the key or the fob. How might you be the worker for Jesus' needs? We could be, again, going back to a family. We should, you could have children to bring up. What a responsibility that is. Family at home, teenagers, older ones, grandchildren. We have all them in our circle of friends that we can look at the keys. How might we, you and me, be a worker for Jesus? How can we do this in our home, with our colleagues at work, school friends, friends at clubs? friends about. A locksmith doesn't make a key to fit just anywhere. He makes a key for a particular lock and purpose. And so Jesus with us calls us to be witnesses for him. We don't need to be afraid that we were, are unprepared. Instead, we have confidence because Jesus had prepared us he is changing us a little at a time. The locksmith changes the key. Jesus changes us but only a little step at a time. So we get more like him. So we get more like him daily. So in situations we can bring hope to the people Jesus has compassion for. At the start of the reading, Jesus said he had compassion for the people. He went about healing. He went about teaching. He went about preaching. He went around because he had compassion and care for the people. Can we share the same? 
Can we share the same compassion? Can we be fit perfectly by Jesus? Are we going to allow him? So let us pray. In our lives, God, we ask you that you will shape us just like a locksmith will shape a key. That you will shape us and fit us fit for purpose to serve you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We're now going to have our prayers of intercession. They're going to be led to us by the members of the Boys Brigade, but also leaders of the Girls' Guard all over at West Bank. So let us pray. Loving Lord, you call and equip us to serve you. Watch over those who risk their own safety by caring for oppressed believers. Strengthen and protect all those who are persecuted for sharing their faith in places where living out their Christian faith in peace is not allowed. Lord, hear us. Loving Lord, you empower us to live out our discipleship. Give wisdom, imagination and the strength to preserve to those who face apathy as they seek to live out their discipleship. Lord, hear us. Loving Lord, you understand what it means to suffer for what is right. Give comfort and courage to those who are unjustly imprisoned, intimidated and tortured because of their faith. Lord, hear us. Loving Lord, you taught us to pray for those who abuse and hurt us. We pray for people who persecute those who hold different beliefs from their own. May they be touched by the faith and their hearts be open to love, that the world may be united in your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Before we have our prayers of intercession, we're going to sing again. And David is going to play for us, Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here.
It's time to share the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body, all by the cross. And we meet in his name and we share in his peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And let's share with each other a sign of peace. Peace, my lovely friends. Peace be with you. Be with you. Peace be with you, everyone. I do hope you are all well and taking care of each other in these trying times. God bless you all. We're going to sing our final hymn and Alwyn is going to play for us. And the hymn is Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy. And, and some thanks to be given. So there's going to be notice given uh, by Val and also some uh, news and some thanks to be given also by Jane. Good morning everybody. I just wanted to mention about this Just Giving scheme that we've set up. As many of you will know, a coffee shop usually has a very successful coffee morning for Marie Curie in June each year, as does um, throughout the country. And we're very mindful that the um, charity is not going to get the funds this year. So we've set up this Just Giving page and um, allowing people to be able to give a donation if they wish to do so. It would be lovely for people just to donate if you wanted to donate in memory of somebody or just because you missed the coffee shop and their fundraising. Uh, you can do it several ways. You can do it on Facebook. There's a link there. You can do it um, on the Just Giving site. I think if you just put my name in, Valerie Borlase, you should it should come up. It's for Marie Curie Liverpool. Um, or if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can just pass the money or a cheque to me would be better. Or just pop one into the vicarage. Um, this is uh, the news for today, but I hope to come back to you in a couple of weeks with some really good news and see how much we've raised. So thank you very much. Some good news and thank you. On what would have been our youth festival weekend, I wanted to share the great news of how well I think this year's gone and to say thank you to Lottie for doing such an amazing job as our youth ambassador. Lottie isn't a naturally outgoing person, she's got no desire to be the centre of attention, but has without hesitation carried out all the duties we as a church have required of her and has done a wonderful job of finding ways to support her charity food bank. Thanks Lottie as well, but never say no to all the random things I've asked you to do. And often last minute. 
including serving tea at the big breakfast and Roland's induction service. To all our other lovely young people, thank you for endlessly cheering us up, making our monthly services special. My heart always skips a beat when I hear the BB band. Um, for all the fun at camp last year, for helping with the Christmas festival, and for all the quizzes and chats you're now sharing to support each other through these really strange times. You all deserve a festival to celebrate how wonderful each and every one of you are and how important you all are to us at St Mary's. Thank you. Well, we've come to the end of our service. I do wish you a wonderful week. And I do hope and pray that at some point we will again be seeing each other face to face. But for the time being, we will be meeting like this again next week. Uh, and maybe the week after as well. But it just leaves me now to say a prayer, a blessing for you before Stephen gives us our closing prayer. So may the Lord bless you and watch over you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love now and always. Amen. Go to serve, go to love, go to bring healing, go to bring peace. Go in the strength of the Father, go in the power of Jesus, go united by the Spirit, go and know his grace. Amen. Be thou my vision, O oh Lord.